so I, I know that we have a lot of uh, garden reservists, uh, especially in the New England area. We have a we have a ton of them. Um, and how how does the uh, GI Bill process work for them? I know I know that you've already stated that that they have to utilize a benefit while they're still in service. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what? Do they just go in, do the ID me or login.gov thing or whatever, and just start setting up their account and and just use it? How does that work? Yeah, it's it's really that honestly that simple. Like you, once you ser- set up your secured um, identification with id.me or login.gov, and it, the great then the reason that we do that is because what's great with the program we have now with the digital GI Bill is that we have a lot of that information already on on file for you. So once you have established and secured your identity and you go online and apply, you don't have to come to us with your orders. You don't have to come to us with your NOBI and all of this other stuff that would be required in the past. With all this, basically, you're looking for evidence to show that yes, I did this and yes, I signed on for six years. So all that stuff is now transferred to us, you know, from DOD. So we have that on file. So your process can take maybe 10, 15 minutes to apply. And and for some people, you can get an answer as soon as five minutes. And and you have your approval or your denial, whichever the case may be. What if, what if I'm in the Guard Reserve and I'm going to college and I'm using my GI Bill benefit, but I get out of the military before I finish my degree? So... If you're just a reservist and you've done no active duty time, then when you get out and you're in the middle of your classes, then you're going to be responsible on your own for for finishing off that degree. So once with what if you know as referring to chapter sixteen oh six, so it's only it's only something that you're eligible for as long as you're in. So if you plan to you know not stay in through that through that whole time while you're in classes, then that would be something that you'd have to probably want to speak with your with your military branch and see if you want to extend that time so that way it can get covered. And I think you were going to hint towards something else, though, because you made the distinction between uh, a, someone that's in the reserve regard that doesn't have active time. Right. Because if you have been, um, if you're in the reserves or you're in the guard and you have been given a like a Title 10 or a Title 32 active duty call up, then those days start to accumulate for you. And then you can apply those days to the post 9-11 GI Bill, which is something you, you can use once you're out of the reserves. So if you have a call up period, let's say for 90 days, that 90 days now makes you eligible for the post 9-11 GI Bill, even though you're still eligible also for the 1606. So those periods of service are different for you. So the 1606 is covered by your reserve time while the post 9-11 is covered by the qualifying period of service that you had when you're on your on your active duty call up. And what's the minimum amount of time that a guard or reservist would need in order to qualify for post 9-11? So the lowest percentage that we pay out is at a 50%. So that's the, the clock starts on that one at 90 days. Okay. So not so 90 days, that's the the secret sauce. Right. So it goes like 90 to 180, and then it starts to bump up from there, you know, from 50 to 60 to 70%. And we also have, you know, a really good tool that we keep on our Facebook page. Um, that we share often that explains what those magic numbers are as far as how to increase that percentage. Hey folks, connecting with your benefits is our primary mission and the SITREP is providing more options than ever. Subscribe to our free email newsletter, subscribe to our audio podcast channel, or subscribe to our content on YouTube. For details and links, check out the description below.